Coach Solomon here uh, in Pennsylvania, I guess. <laughs> yes, that's correct. Hi, Solomon. How are you doing today? Pretty good. And yourself? How are you doing today, Stephen? I'm doing good. I'm doing a, I'm a great B, so I'm, I'm happy. Okay. You're a busy B, I see. <laughs> I think you're a busy B, too. I try um, to. So uh, today is um, my BBTV live show with you, uh, Coach Solomon, if I may call you coach because this is what you're doing for life <laughs> okay that's correct and for, for a living uh you're also a brand ambassador along with me on uh, uh, bb.com B that's correct e b double e dot c o n um and um uh, as as i was saying in some previous um in some previous live shows we are digital entrepreneurs so uh, for the audience today uh, that is uh, with us on Facebook, um, I'd like uh, you know, um, I'd like you to like introduce what you're doing, uh, you know, in terms of specialty, and then mm -hmm. after we'll talk about more or less, you know, what is your experience? Why are you on BB? Why did you find BB so attractive and things like that? Okay. Okay. Well, just to start off, I guess, um, would you like me to take you, take you through the whole history of how I got started, or just what I'm focused on right now? <laughs> To tell them, uh, you know, people love uh, love storytelling, and it's all okay, about being authentic and, okay. and, and, and having a, a simple and mm -hmm. with simplicity a relationship with the audience. So that would be the case. Please do. Okay. Well, I got started online uh, about three years ago, and um, I was pretty much the things I were learning online were, you know, by myself going to different blogs, doing my research, going to YouTube channels, and then I joined a. a, a educational platform a community of people online is pretty pretty famous but uh you know it's pretty much widespread online so when i joined these people it was like almost like a community of celebrity network marketers it was professionals guys yeah. who were really making you know serious money were flocking to this group it's called M mlsp in order to uh share their daily routines with regular people so i joined up with this group last year and i probably learned more in one year than i think would have took me maybe two to three years to learn um a lot of uh, fundamental truths, principles of the science of network marketing, the philosophy of it, uh, brand awareness, attraction marketing, providing value for the audience as opposed to just wanting to sell a product just to benefit myself financially. I came to the realization in order to produce results, you have to have a genuine interest in trying to help other people with their opportunities. So I got started off there, uh, again, a, a, a lot of education. I would say that during the course of the last year, I've gained a trade as a result of joining this community. And I was into social media coaching, and I was also making uh, promotional videos for my own capture pages, so on and so forth. But then I knew a couple friends online where I would make a couple videos for them. And then that's when I came up with the idea, why don't I just make these promotional videos for the general public? So that's what I started to do. And uh, that's when I gave birth, birth to what I call x1kcommercials.com. You can check out the website that I made there. And I'm pretty much making promotional videos for, uh, any online business, entrepreneurs, social media agencies, so on and so forth. Now, these videos are pretty fancy when people look at them, but they still are mystified by what do you do with them? And that's where the social media coaching comes into play when it comes to the, uh, the promotional videos, because I'm showing them how to use these promotional videos. You can do a lot of awesome things with them. Uh, Facebook has actually allowed you to be able to upload video to your fan page. So that's yeah. one thing to me. When it came to uh, you know the uh, promo video X1K commercials business, is because eventually, even if you, most people don't know about it, eventually one day they will have some, they, they will need a promotional video, and this opened up the market for me. So I thought that was like perfect timing. So you can upload the video to your uh, Facebook business page. You can actually put it on the front page of a website. When people click on a website and that video is there, it's pretty much just a resume telling who you are, what the website is about, and it catches people's attention. You can also uh, put it on capture pages. And you can even, I've just seen it use videos a lot, uh, video marketing a lot on Instagram. Like when I, when I engage people in conversation on their Instagram, when they have questions about what I do, I already have six to seven different videos that explain exactly what it is that I do. So I don't have to do much, you know, much typing. So I actually send them videos, yeah. videos which explains everything, which is a beautiful thing and it's extremely convenient. But uh, the most important thing that you can actually do with these videos is brand awareness. If you yeah. want to see this brand awareness, it's almost like if you ask a general person, if they had the opportunity to put their uh, advertisement or their business on national television, who would turn that down? 
Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. Because you know you're getting that attention, you're getting that attention, you're getting your business before people's eyes. People know that you exist. And that's the same thing you can do online. Most people don't realize that this actually, I think I was looking at Zipporah.com the other day, and it says something like 2.01 billion people are on Facebook. It says something like 1.13 billion log on active users log on to Facebook on a daily basis from their cell phone. So that's the advantage of Facebook over regular television. People are carrying their televisions in their pockets, their, their laptops, so on and so forth. Yeah. And by that's means very true. It is very true, right? So yeah. and you have these people uh, checking the newsfeed on a daily basis, but when you take one of these commercials and you use it with Facebook paid ads or paid ads on Twitter, on Instagram, you're putting your business in the news, news feed of thousands of people in your local community. If you have a brick and mortar or even mm -hmm. people that's online, so like the possibilities are pretty much endless, but there's a psychology behind it too when it comes to establishing brand awareness and using paid ads. And that is when everybody goes to the supermarket, people will actually pick a brand name over a no frills item. The no frills, That's it. Yeah. The no frill item could almost be the exact equivalent as the as the brand name, you know, item, but they'll go for the they'll go for the brand name because it's widely known. And psychologically, that says something to a person, I can trust it. So that's one thing that I, that's one of the ways that I use these brand awareness videos and also teach people and educate people how to use them so that they can get their name out there and they get, uh -huh. the, get the franchise going so people can recognize their brand. It's very powerful. I think it's one of the most powerful forms of marketing that you actually have online. Uh, one thing that I do generally, I have um, one video which actually explains the business and I keep that video running. Mm -hmm. Not it's always out there. You don't just run it for a couple of days. You run it for days, weeks, months, the same way they do on television. You turn on television, same for the commercials playing over and over again, 24-7, 365. And that's how you have to put your video out there. And the reason why I say that, I see a lot of people using brand awareness videos, but they're not really using it during the longevity, the long period of time they really should be using them. Beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I had one question. How does the uh, brand awareness uh, affect the, the the people? I mean, it relates people. How does that impact their life? How does it impact their life? Well, and that, my friends, is why you should plug up your laptop. <laughs> I was I was thinking something something was happening, and that's that's the purpose of being live, you know. <laughs> and, and, and you know now why I, we were talking talking together earlier of having a, a B plan, <laughs> like uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's what erase all pencils. Yeah, and that's also the demonstration for everyone here on Facebook that we are really live because a beep mm -hmm. happens. <laughs> <laughs> so we were we were <laughs> talking together about um, how brand. Uh, awareness uh, affects people. Okay, well, how it affect, affects people um, from the customer <laughs> and how can I say, say for instance, when they watch a commercial on television, you may not need what they have at that moment, but when you do uh -huh. need something similar to it, you're saying your mind, you know what, I did see this commercial on television, whether it be a lawyer, a business, a service, X1K commercials, you may be looking for a promo video, you know what, I did see this guy on um, who's always on Facebook or Instagram, and that's when they reach out. That's the beauty of it, is that when you put the commercial out there to play, they know that you may not need it when you see it, but when you think about it and you do need it, you can, you know, so you can use that as a point of reference. It's almost like when you go fishing, when you go fishing, you throw the hook out in the water and you leave the hook out in the water, right? Yes. And that's how, that's how you catch fish. If you throw the hook out in the water, when you think you see a fish, you're not going to catch any fish. And that's, a, that's the, pretty much the idea of when it comes to brand marketing. It can help out the, uh, the actual customer, but also when it comes to the business, it's all about establishing that name. Starbucks, Targets, the Golden Arches, you're trying to achieve the same thing with your brand. You're trying to get it well known. And that's the purpose of using these so brand is awareness. Is that, is that a new way to market uh, a, a company, in fact, a company product or service? I wouldn't say so at all, because uh, the interesting thing is before the internet came into play in Facebook with brand awareness ads and everything, uh, corporations, businesses have been using this same tac on, tactic on television for years, for decades. 
There the, the might be a difference between television. Television people sit in the living room and they're mm. absolutely passive. Mm. Uh, if, if you are, do, do not agree with, with the brand, with the product, or you think that uh, the, the scene that is described in, in the advertisement is not something that is really real, you know, then uh, uh, it's all about, you know, thinking that you cannot, if you're on in front of your TV, you cannot interact with the local cashier. What is it? Sorry about that. I'm a mess today. It's okay. I'm going to switch, I'm going to switch and, uh, and, and put it uh, now to, uh, what's that? No, it's on just one, two, three. Uh, okay. Oh. I'm trying to guess which one is your laptop. I think it's number three. So you're going to be back soon. Yes, yeah, sorry. Here we are. So that's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So, so that the ads aren't offensive. Well, the interesting part is when you turn on the television, you really don't have much of a control of what type of um, ads that you see on television. But the advantage of social media is targeting. Yeah. So most people who show an interest on Facebook, you know, Facebook harvests all your information. If even if you write, type anything in your message box, and you're conversing with somebody, supposedly it said that Facebook even harvest that information when you're having a regular conversation with somebody inside of the, you know, the message box. Based on the website you go to, based on the groups that you're a part of, Facebook harvests all this information and it puts you in, into different categories. So when you go to Facebook ads and you want to target people who will have some type of interest in your business, whatever your business may be, real estate, uh, social media coaching, promotional videos, you can target those groups of people that Facebook has already put together to advertise your business. And so obviously it's not just throwing your business out there to just random people. You're targeting specific people and you produce better results, which is the beautiful thing about it. I think that's the beauty. Yeah, of it. Yeah. You know, I was thinking that, you know, uh, there is a lot of example, uh, especially on Facebook uh, live. Uh, because you can choose on their map, you know, what uh, channel you would like to be, what kind of web TV. So, uh, you know, uh, here at MyDB TV, we have one question about uh, web TVs. Are that the future of online marketers and how do they do that? Web TV? Yeah. Can you elaborate on that? Uh, web TV and online marketers, how can that, that be beneficial to them? But I'm not that really familiar with web television, to tell the truth. Uh-huh. But th there is an impact, you know, between them. when you're an online marketer, you're in the social media. But if you're in the social media, the, the conservative way to do things is you promote on Facebook, you choose some ads, you, you love to do 140 characters on Twitter, and then you tweet, you tweet, you do some tweet storms sometimes. Mm. You choose a, a lot of hashtags. But yet again, those, I would say, are not synchronous. Um, and there is no synchronicity with the, the added value perception that mm -hmm. you can have while you're watching any web TV or uh, mm -hmm. live or casting as, as we're doing now. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? Um, in, another interesting thing, too, is that uh, it's a form of or a technique of marketing that I'm pretty sure most people are familiar with, but it's called attraction marketing. And even though, say, for instance, you have a product, most of the times when you present that product, here, take this, so on and so forth, it'll probably repel 90% of the people that you expose that, uh, that advertisement to. So when you want to use the form of uh, marketing, which is called attraction marketing, you're pretty much online to help solve people's problems. Like when it comes to my advertisements, when it comes to the promotional videos, I don't just say, here, this is an awesome video, buy this. You have to leave with the problem that it will solve, brand awareness. That's what people need. That's what people want. And it goes back to the question, would you, if you had the opportunity to advertise your uh, commercial or your business on television, obviously you would, because in order to generate revenue, you need attention. People need to know that you exist, so on and so forth. So I think that when it comes to social media here today, the organic reach has been greatly reduced. I remember back in the day when I could uh, drop a blog post inside of a regular Facebook group, and I would get massive amounts of traffic back to my website. But unfortunately, it's not that, it's not like that anymore. Facebook and as well as these other social media websites, they want you to pay to use uh you know paid ads to reach 
the people you would normally be able to reach organically four to five years ago. You know what I mean? So it's, yeah. so when most people online, I, I, I feel as though on a good point that I use in my advertisement is that people don't feel as though that people are seeing that content. This is getting lost in the sea of people, so on and so forth. And that's what paid ads yeah. And that's what paid ads are for and um, the brand awareness. So that's what people generally need is to be seen, to be recognized, to notice, to know that their business is out there. Otherwise, you can technically get lost in the sea full of people. If Absolutely. Yeah. So okay. So yeah, that, that leads uh, to to uh, in fact uh, our question. Um, and you are you and I are digital entrepreneurs. We're also um, because um, you know uh, social media is a lifestyle as well. Um, you and I are uh, brand ambassadors on uh, BB.com. Mm -hmm. You know that that famous. Uh, uh, social media platform that started yeah. two years ago uh, in Madrid, Spain. Okay. Uh, they, it was, I think, created by uh, Javier Camararica and Juan Imaz, mm -hmm. who were the former owner and, and founders of Canamel in, in Spain. Mm -hmm. That's kind of, you know, the um, um, it was a um, um, uh, emailing uh, email company service. Okay. Uh, and then uh, when they sold their business, they were like, uh, well, what are we going to do now? <laughs> and then they had an idea, you know, about, mm -hmm. you know, having uh, some better quality content sharing uh, and some kind of affinity networking. You know, they, they, they were on to that. So, mm -hmm. you know, two years ago, they, they created the, the, their new startup. So they are serial entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they, they offered us the opportunity to get along with a huge community of like-minded people with mm -hmm. this, that share, in fact, the same interests uh, or have the same lifestyle. But in, you know, in fact, uh, we don't we do not know each other. We are not even in the same social networks, yeah. you know, because uh, you know, we know everybody knows now. I hope uh, that how does a social media works? You need to be in contact with to be in the first layer of contact in a contact book on the social media platform and then yeah. you can interact with your contacts or slash your network <laughs> mm -hmm. but uh, what is amazing with bb is that it goes behind the second layer of contacts like the contacts yeah. of your friends or your the contacts of your contacts yeah. um, if you share uh, some affinities uh, by showing some interest in a in a group in a social group um called their hives um then uh, uh their topics or their blog posts or their buzz are going to appear on your wall that means in, in your uh user interface you're going to have that in front of your face you cannot ignore yeah. it you know after uh, whether or not they accept uh, uh to follow you or you following them you know, it's it's all about affinities mm -hmm. And I think it's uh, I think it's the same behavior because um, people have less contacts. Yes. So it's less the jungle, you know. Mm. <laughs> mm. Uh, but the, the the relationships are more are more meaningful. I mean, mm. people are really interacting together. Sometimes mm. they are co-authoring, collaborating on a, on a blog post, on a video bus uh, collaboration. Um, of course, everyone shares uh, mostly, you know, what they like uh, with other people's posts. Yes. Um, and that creates, uh, I mean, uh, the essence of uh, a, a relationship, mm. a digital relationship, you know, uh, yes. because most of us are relationship builders. Uh, we go out there in the digital space, uh, not just to browse around <laughs> and mm. have a promenade yeah. it's, uh, it's mostly i hope for those that have a purpose it's mostly with a purpose you know mm. so when you when when it happens that you you you, you came uh to bb you know what was your initial purpose what, what are you looking for well within the uh I'm not really sure if i was if i came with a purpose but uh I, and a matter of fact i forgot who brought it to my attention to even somebody referred me to there and uh i got into blogging maybe like um six months ago and yes. i somebody brought uh bb to my attention maybe like two months after i started the blog 
and I was looking for different websites to post, you know, to post up at, but somebody referred uh-huh. to BB. And so far, I would say that it's probably the best experience I've probably had online thus far. And the beauty about it is that it, I know it's the international community. It's, it's like it's international. You come into contact with people from all around the world and different attitudes. Like I'm from America. I love America. I was born here. It's my homeland. But you can go from one state to the next and, and notice a shift in attitude. You know what I mean? So yeah, absolutely. So if you come into contact with people internationally, I I actually appreciate the people who I'm communicating with, and, you know, and the attitude and the mindset of the international people I'm coming in contact with as a result of uh, BB. I think it opens it yourself up to a whole different audience than I was coming in contact on a lot of different websites like Facebook, LinkedIn, and I'm speaking to people all from all around the world. I'm saying with different interests, it's pretty beautiful. And the thing, one of the things I appreciate the most is that um, the organic you know, communication it was actually like it. Uh, some of the websites, like I said, I, I do believe in matter of fact, it is a fact. When you look up the statistics of certain websites, they dramatically reduce uh, organic reach, period. It's almost like it's damned up. But when it came to uh, BB.com, I mean, just two or three, two or three articles into BB.com, I was coming in contact with so many people. I was, I was pretty, it, it, you know, I was surprised. And that's yeah. one of the, that, that really caught my attention. And plus, you have a lot of top dogs like Stefan right here. I mean, you know, basically <laughs> a top dog like this. You know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't expect somebody to be on his level to to be so, you know, to be so cool and to be so embracing. You know I'm saying, but you got a lot of, you know, heavy hitters on there that's actually embracing. Despite the fact I only got started I mean, a couple of years ago, I'm still learning, and I know a lot more than the average person. But I'm, you know, but I'm still growing. But even mingling with these guys right here and they have a nice humble spirit, I'm actually able to actually learn a lot more. So, and I'm already right now, I'm right now being interviewed live. And like I said, I mean, how, you can't get any better than this. Yeah, uh, being being myself around for 28 years in, in what we call the real life social networks, you know, I've been doing some five to seven wine and cheese <laughs> uh, social events and so on. Uh, press conference rooms, um, participate to corporate uh, congress events mm-hmm. and so on. Uh, you know, uh, th- the main thing uh, is all about building relationship. And the only way to do that is to be simple and authentic. When I say simple, um, uh, thank you for calling me a hard dog, but uh, I'm a normal guy. I really am a normal guy. Uh, what I have... Um, um, in myself is that the passion of what I'm doing mm. and more than having the passion and what I'm doing, I have the passion of building a relationship with people because um, when you meet new people, when you talent, new skills, if you put that on the shaker, okay, and you shake it hard, the outcome are going to be more amazing than you think, you mm. know, mm. Uh, first, because there is a kind of a live brainstorming um, element that is mixing with that and um, the fact that also on my BB you leave your door open there is no restrictive algorithm you know preventing you from having uh, a XYZ number of contact uh, or uh, an organic outreach um, actually when you post on BB and you put uh, the same post on LinkedIn, just a benchmark, uh, you're very disappointed by LinkedIn outreach because you get like maybe 52, 100 views. Yeah. And then you, and, and, you and, and what you're very, I would say, frustrated because at some point you go, how can I have like 50 views with 5,000 contacts? And then you have 500 contacts on BB that are meaningful, but then you get like, Four thousand views for the same uh, time span. How, how, how does it come? <laughs> you know, it's, it's something going going weird here. Mm. Uh, this is why I think um, uh, there there has been so much user engagement. Uh, if we mm. just uh, you know uh, take the example of the monthly active users, uh, the rate of of monthly active users on LinkedIn is like maybe twenty two twenty three percent. And, um, wow. and that, that, that used to be 42 
uh, I think, uh, last uh, trimester on, on my BB for monthly active users, and it raised up to uh, an extra one person, so it's 43 now. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. um, because in fact, if you work in a community, you want to be interacting with others. Mm -hmm. And if people are interacting with you, that's because they are online, actually doing something on the platform. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you probably have witnessed that with your own posts, I think. Actually, I have. Um, and, and the articles that I write, which are valuable to people who are curious about the information. I put a, a links to tutorials for treat for a free video training. And I track those links to find out how many people are clicking on my links. Um, from bb.com. I've, I've actually gotten a lot of traffic back to uh, back to some of my capture pages. And, and what's the proportion? What's the proportion? If you have like 100 visitors, I'll, I'll say back to your website, what's the proportion going to coming from BB? I've been on BB maybe for like the last, I, don't, I think, how, how, how long has it been? Maybe like four or five months. And I've seen um, my tracking numbers go up to the hundreds. So if like, it used to be like 10, 20, 15, but the links are hitting like 100, 115 around those numbers. So it's not double digits anymore. It's actually up to the three digits now as a result of it. And these are just based off of, you know, old blog posts that I, that, that, that I wrote in a long time ago. So you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong at all. Uh, yeah. It was another thought that just jumped out of my mind right now. But um, I don't know. But like I said, that's when, it, when it comes to a lot of these social media websites, I'm not really upset about it. I, I think in generally when like the organic reach was a little bit more uh, natural back in the day before they put the, restric yes. restric the restrictions on, I think there are a lot of people who made a lot of money online. I think there are lots of people who made a lot of money, like a lot of heavy hitters right now. Ray Higdon, uh, even when it comes to this um, community that I'm involved with called My Lead System Pro, there's a lot of heavy hitters in it. Like these guys are celebrities. They have huge followings. And it's just my personal opinion that, these, that there's a lot of people maybe 10, 10, 15 years ago before they put the restrictions on or, or put the chokehold on so tight. I think there are a lot of people who made fortunes all, online. So I guess some yeah. of the social media websites are saying that, uh, you know, we, gotta get, we have to get a piece of the, a piece of the pie. But if you ask me, um, I think the internet should be free. I think of it like if you if you if everybody owns a farm and you have radishes and grapefruit on your farm and you have something else, you bring it down to the town square. You know, you change vegetables and fruit. I, I mean, that's the way I see the internet. Um, every, everybody can benefit from the internet, um, and, and you know, and I think even go as far as make a living from home, so on and so forth on the internet. But I think it's a really foul thing that, you know, some of these websites put restrictions on organic reach. You should be, it should be allowed. I think that they should police, you know, like people who are spamming and everything and, you know, not, you know, you're not, you know, not engaging other people appropriately. But most of the, you find that these people aren't even properly educated <laughs> etiquette of online in the first place, in the, you know, in the first place. Yeah. Like even when it comes to the, uh, the American economy, I'm not sure how it is in other countries, but. The American economy is pretty bad right now. So you have a lot of people who jump online. I think you probably have more people than ever online because it's almost like the San Francisco gold rush. They heard that it's gold in those mountains. So they go online and they want to uh, yeah. contribute, but they haven't been properly educated and it comes out as spam. You know what I mean? And even, I, I don't know, I, but I think the internet should be left open organically and if people aren't doing it right, they should be educated and taught how to engage with each other properly so that we all can benefit. You know, that's mm -hmm. just yeah, yes, yes. Um, yeah, I, I, I've been, I've been, you know, trying to do a few things on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on bb.com. What struck me the most was uh, that uh, there's a large uh, Latino community there, um, mm -hmm. Spanish ones, Latin American ones, and a huge community from uh, Brazil and Portugal as well. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when you are uh, analyzing uh, in which group you should post, you know, that you see that you have posts like um, administrative and offices in Spanish um, have 1.4 million participants. Mm, that's a lot. That's a, you know, I, I don't know any LinkedIn groups with that much people. Mm. 
And as far as I started to write content in Spanish and share with that work, you know, it took me like maybe one month or two to become one of the top influencers in that uh, in that uh, in that group. And wow. since since then, I, when I'm doing something, uh, I'm doing it multicultural. Anyway. Anyway, um, even if I'm not uh, a Portuguese speaker, I'm using Google Translate at least to have a blurb <laughs> of what I intended to communicate with, with them. Mm. And, uh, and that, that is interesting because the only barrier of language, because I didn't learn uh, Portuguese at school, I learned Spanish, so I can, I can speak Spanish, I can understand Spanish, I can write correctly in Spanish. Okay. Um, um, I, I, I decided to open the window to uh, the Portuguese and Brazilian community. And, mm. uh, and what I love with Bibi is that they gave it back to me, you know, mm. because they're interacting with me. Some mm. are asking uh, for, for, for pieces of advice. Uh, mm. Some are, you know, just followers or uh, um, fans, because like it. each time I post something, they are there to share it again. Uh, mm -hmm. So if they share, that's good for the organic outreach. <laughs> mm -hmm. Big, uh, and I'm, 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 I'm usually saying I am because we are. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. That's that's very true in life. I okay, so I'm waiting. You are. I'm waiting to interview. Um, I said I'm waiting to interview you. Oh yeah, no problem. We can do that the other way around anytime soon. <laughs> uh, it's all about planning and doing some prep work because, of course, I do believe people. I love the format to hear one or two people or maybe three or, or shuffling guests. You know that people are exchanging. Um, but at some point, uh, uh, you know, they'd like to know more about you know not what we have to say or what we have to sell mm -hmm. or to transact. I love the word transaction. Because in mm. transaction, no, not all about money. You were specific, spe yeah. specifying, you know, that not, yeah. not everything is economical, but exchanging point of right. views is a transaction. Sharing right. is a transaction. Liking, commenting uh, is a transaction as well. So transaction doesn't have to be economical or no. money-wise, you know. No. Uh, I know at the end of the day, everyone needs to make a living out of something. And I'm mm -hmm. ready to help uh, hold the whole community here. Say, hey, what do you want to be? Who do you want to be? What do you want to? What are you, or what are you trying to achieve? Uh, because after, if I cannot help them technically, I, I, I know someone in my network that can uh, mm -hmm. uh, interact with them. And the beauty of my BBTV um, is that uh, okay, hold on a second. I'm going to wave the hand on Facebook, on Twitter, or on BB. I'm going to ask them, I'm going to invite them, we're going to be live, and that's instantaneous. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of my BBTV live show. Mm -hmm. Because when you're looking at uh, the Facebook live map, I, I love it. And I, I'm watching from time to time one or two live shows. Okay. But it's, it's, it's a one-way direction, you know. Like, uh, you, I do understand that if you're a CNN or any uh, local uh, cable TV news, you stream a signal for in the next one hour to mm -hmm. four hours because I think the maximum uh, live signal goes for four hours in streaming on Facebook Live. Okay. But that would be that would be again only a, just a duplicate from TV. What you were doing on TV, you do that uh, on social media. What's the point? Mm -hmm. If yeah. I'm not watching the TV, why you want me to watch it again on my favorite? <laughs> social media tool you know and it's like uh, what, what do you want me to switch up the phone too <laughs> it's, it's like you know uh, I, I love sometimes people are trying to sell me a hoover, hoover machine uh, at the door or an encyclopedia but, but if yeah. i say no if i say no once at the door why should they go back in the backyard garden and knock at the window come on <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's the same thing with people online too. Like, um, well, I think I think I don't know if I made it, but it was a video I was going to make about having diversity uh, yeah. in, your, in your arsenal opportunities because you got people who just started online, you have people who've been online for a while, and you got prof straight professionals, and then you got experts online. You have uh, people from of uh, so many of so much so many different you know so many years of experience 
the same thing is not going to work for everybody. So you got to have, you know, diverse opportunities. And I think you got to focus on helping people with their own opportunities instead of trying to offer them a new one. I don't, I don't really got get better results doing that. As supporting people with what they're already doing, as opposed to trying to change them something to something different. But um, I don't know. But then you yeah. have uh, some people I noticed that you have online, they, like they sell products. Like the most com common products that I hear of online is, um, what's that? The water purifier, Bitcoin. Yeah, absolutely. Bitcoin and make $300 in like one day or something like that. But I don't know. If you have a more diverse uh, arsenal, you do a lot better. Yes. And in, in terms of, of, uh, of groups, and, and hives, do you have preferences on BB? I mean, on B, uh, I would say nor B. Uh, the groups that are relevant towards social media marketing, you know, social media coaching, so social media marketing, anything to do with that specifically. It's a lot of hives in there. I'm still looking through them to find ones that's relevant, but um, you know, towards what I'm trying to do online. But so far, I would say that's that's about it. Social media marketing and uh, online sales promotion you know those are the groups that pretty much in interest me or those are the groups that will be interested in my posts more than likely i don't okay, want to I, I get that i get the feature um and um do you intend to do some live station to to bring some some learning nutrition information for the community out there of course of course absolutely that's a must i mean that's a uh, that should be the, you know, that's that's the, that's how you take your lead by pro providing value for people that you know people can actually use, even if, even if it's through you know your own personal experiences. I think I would say I have a couple of things to share, you know, with with the uh, with the B people with the B television. Yeah, so that does mean that you're gonna prepare uh, for us and the community a, a few videos that you have the secret of because I know you're good with uh, with post production. Uh, I've seen uh, a few of your uh, your uh, videos uh, for customers mm -hmm. that you share on your YouTube channel, and um, I do believe there is some some raw material here to do a, a live broadcast and and have that spread to the world. Okay, I'll be more than happy to anytime. And uh, as you're an online marketer as well, I think you know preparing a kind of what I call you know when you are selling or sending out or uh, sh shouting out uh, for a new movie like the lost uh, pirates of the caribbean you know <laughs> what you do you do some previews with tom 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 yeah yeah you have to do that really you know uh, solomon yeah yeah <laughs> to get people excited about that and then post here and there um to um to announce in fact an agenda i think at some point a live broadcast is, is good but mm -hmm. live broadcast should be scheduled yeah. and well planned with a huge break work. Because I, at some point, we are getting more and more pros about mm -hmm. it. You're right. As online marketers, as digital entrepreneurs. And I think that um, if we lead these initiatives, uh, we show all the way others like uh, if we can do it you guys come on you, you can do it you, you want to run a trial with us come on jump in mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and then people start to be excited in enjoying the uh, user experience but not from the passive uh, seated users experience they are involved mm. and then they are having some internal emotions about their UX, yeah, user experience, but again, I don't like the word user, that participant experience. Yes. Yes. Up to the fact that they dropped the, the way they were shy about it or they didn't dare to do. Mm -hmm. And then they say, well, that's funny. I can swim like the others. There's mm -hmm. no sharks in the water. Yeah. And I, I am with generous people around me. <laughs> and I, I had, I was not like uh, one way communication. Mm. Uh, it's like a, you and I, uh, a Friday evening uh, playing basketball in Harlem. Yeah. 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 <laughs> We're yeah. having fun. Yeah. And um, we forget about uh, religion, differences, mm. political mm. views and so on. Mm. And people love actually the momentum. And after it's all about, hey, you know what? 
happiness, that kind of happiness or that kind of momentum of adrenaline, okay, you can create that too. And if yes. you empower people and you show them all the way, they are autonomous after. And, and I think when we want to have a, a peaceful society that goes more and more prosperous, we should empower people and, and not down downsizing them or looking down to them or mm -hmm. you know trying yeah. to, to 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 be little yeah to be brutal or something it's all about uh you know some will take some baby steps and some will completely embrace the lifestyle it's mm -hmm. all about doing after um i don't know if if uh internet should be free or have to be free Mm -hmm. uh, but at least um, no one can prevent you from that opportunity to do something. Mm -hmm. uh, this is why, uh, uh, you know, I'm always thinking that um, people that are having hard times about, you know, finding a job, uh, employment and, and struggling with life, you know, guys, uh, I, I know, um, maybe don't go to the restaurant or to the movies, you know, mm -hmm. save some money. Uh, mm -hmm. at, at least, uh, if you have already, because I don't think that sometimes, even if you're jobless, you don't sacrifice your smartphone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. With this, that, okay, yeah. you mm -hmm. use it, use it. Just just buy a better battery or an extra battery because you're gonna mm -hmm. need it. Because after, come on, uh, you know you have talent, you have value. Show it to the world. At some yeah. point, you know someone is gonna is gonna pick up on the social media and say, "Hey, you, you're good. Come with me. Uh, yeah. Can you do that again?" Okay, fantastic. How, how much per hour or how much per 10 stations or whatsoever. Now you're no longer uh, resourceless in terms of economics because you, you can out be uh, even a, a tiny small entrepreneur. You can do something out of your 10 fingers. But you know what that is, is that I know if now when they have children, I'll, I'll train them to be entrepreneurs so that they'll never have to have a boss. But yeah. Know, you have a lot of people out there, the the you know the worker mentality, nine to five mentality compared to the entrepreneurial mentality, it's almost like trying to wake somebody up from the matrix. You know what I mean? It's a completely reversal of the mind process. I mean, but uh, it's unfortunate. Um, you know, you have a lot of people out there with the nine to five mentality, and they feel like they trapped. You know what I mean? Because uh, they paying these guys, they paying adults the amount that you would probably pay a high school when they get out of high school. You know what I mean? And yeah. 